Not much happening in the world of Kickstarter or Tindy for the maker this week, but here's a couple of interesting products for you. The first kickstart is a great idea inspired by Adafruit's Perma Proto Boards. It allows you to easily transfer components from Proto Board to a soldered board. The layout is identical, so you can just move all the components over without changing anything. Nice. If you're into DSP work, then this nice little Kickstarter might be for you. It is, however, the third attempt of the project, so caveat emptor. This next one is an underwater drone, which looks like it just might reach its goal. It seems to be very similar to the Open Rove, but is a modular design. It can reach 150 feet underwater and moves at 4 knots. This next one I was going to include last week, but there were too many Kickstarters to cover then. It's a desktop CNC mill that has under two weeks to reach its target. The rewards are fairly decent, and their prototype seems to be fairly accurate, being able to mill a whole range of materials. It has some decent speeds and a medium-sized work area. If you're into CNC, then check this one out. This next one I'm keen on, mainly because one of my midterm goals is to send a camera to the moon. One of the primary concerns with space travel is radiation, and a lot of standard electronics can't handle it. So this guy is creating a board that has everything you will need for space travel. Space cots components, telemetry module, and sensors. It hasn't seen a lot of interest. Who knows if it'll fly? Moving on to 3D printing. Ever run out of filament halfway through a print? This Kickstarter just might save your bacon next time. It monitors filament usage and lets you know when you run low. It also has a handy output allowing you to pause your printer when you run low. Don't like all those stepped edges in your 3D prints? This Kickstarter is a filament that allows you to smooth away those steps after you print. So you can produce some really great 3D prints that actually look like they were handmade. Better be quick with this one, as it'll be gone in the next two days. Now I have to include this next one, only because it's just so unbelievable. Aiton apparently, are looking for only 25,000 US to build the world's first interstellar space vehicle. Hey, don't we already have those? No, apparently not. These people have stumbled upon one of Nikola Tesla's anti-gravity devices, or flying saucer. There's a whole lot of blah 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 with some great drawings and lots of technical illustrations, trying to convince everyone how they are going to pull this one off with only 25,000. Really? On the Tindy side, we have a few new products that are interesting. The first one is a video experimenter shield, which allows you to do things like perform object detection, overlay graphics or text onto video, and decode closed caption text. It's only for analog video, but still an interesting Arduino shield. The sensible thing is a very tiny board running the ever popular Atmega 328P, but also has a Cortex M0 and Bosch 9 DOF IMU. The theory is that the Cortex-M0 does all the IMU fusion data calculations for you and presents it to the Atmel chip. It all runs off a standard coil cell battery. For all those STEM students out there, this modular Arduino compatible board looks good. All of the components can be cut off, so you only use what you need. If you're looking for an all-in-one data logging board that's Arduino compatible, this one looks quite good. A little pricey but it gives you an Arduino, SD card, and RTC all in one package. The BLE throwy concept is good, but for it to be a real throwaway device, it needs to be cheaper. If you want humidity and temperature data logging with full BLE support, then get one of these. If you want super accurate ranging, then this time of flight laser ranging module looks good. It comes in a tiny package that can be soldered directly to a Teensy or a Dragonfly. One of the nice features is that power can be supplied from any GPIO pin. Moving on to power applications, we have the ADE7763 breakout board. This little breakout is a dedicated energy meter IC that allows you to measure true energy use. Nice. And if you want to be able to dim those lights because you've discovered you're using too much electricity, then this is a board for you. Unfortunately, it only supports 240 volts at 50 Hz mains. Great for Australia, but not so good for the US people. LifePos, or LiPo4s, or whatever you want to call them, are a great new battery technology advance, with one of the main advantages being able to be left in a fully charged state for long periods of time. This makes it ideal for UPS applications, like this one, 
a full UPS solution for your Raspberry Pi. Got a whole lot of half-dead batteries lying around? This circuit will show you how to light up an LED using almost dead batteries. Great for STEM students. The Nano Hub is a great idea. Ever needed more than just one USB port? Well this little hub can be soldered in and gives you two USB ports, or essentially one additional port, since you need to plug it in to an existing USB port. The TNC Prop Shield is a nice little add-on to the TNC, providing 10 DOF motion sensors, a 2 watt audio amp, high speed 5 volt buffers for driving APA102 LEDs, and an 8 megabyte flash memory. Nice. The Wino board hasn't got anything to do with alcohol, but it is a tiny little Cortex M0 based board with built in Wi-Fi. It's similar to the Onion 2, but offers stackable headers allowing for some add-ons that the company have yet to produce. I've ordered a bunch of these, so stay tuned for a view video on them. IC Station is a new electronics hobby company in China that's just started up. They have some interesting and odd boards on their site, like radar sensors, LoRa transceivers, and MP3 modules. I've requested samples of a couple of their products to see what they're like, so stay tuned for a review of those. So that wraps up the weekly roundup of new Maker products. If you got something out of this video, then don't forget to like. And if you subscribe, then you'll be notified when new videos come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.